Hey, Redcon Raider here. With special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. Including, but not limited to, Revenant, Eloise, The Nerd in Warpaint, Dragon Matrix 7, Eerie V23, Excelsior, Goatlabe, Kazorm, Lima, Nathan Welch Jr., Thomas Piedkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenruck. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to Werewolf the Apocalypse, Heart of the Forest. And um, yeah, things got a little messy last time. I had to take a bit of a breather to, you know, kind of unpack at least some of what had happened. But it, but it is, as aforementioned, very in keeping with the, uh, the World of Darkness aesthetic. You know, a seemingly mundane world where monsters are lurking in every corner and everyone is just one giant formative event away from being plunged into this world of, of constant horror. Though, to be fair, uh, unless you happen to be one of the lucky ones with powers of some sort, you probably just die. And then maybe come back as a ghost or something, and the cycle continues. Thank you, Kaiser. Kaiser just zipped by and smacked the uh, microphone with his tail. I don't know if that was audible or not. And, of course, it also turns out that Bartek is, in fact, quite, quite dead. It wasn't just a dream. And uh, I have been told that, apparently, his death is not mandatory. Had we kept our relationship with him high enough then uh, apparently we would have killed someone else. Um, I've heard uh, random loggers. I've heard Anya, which would have been even more awful, I think. Anyway, so it uh, turns out we're a werewolf. I guess we'll just uh, accept it and see where this takes us. Hiding the bodies. The headless body was heavy. They said that as my first kill, it was my burden. It was my duty to take it to the Barrows. Our willpower is so low. I didn't mean to kill him. But I didn't do it, I said, looking at the corpse. I'd never. This is the nature of things. We are Guru, and we kill, Lisa whispered in my ear. Denying it is denying yourself. She and Daniel accompanied me, carrying the severed head in a bag. The other stayed behind, covering the tracks. I focused on the walk. I didn't want to talk, or to think, for that matter. Not about the person I was carrying, or rather, trying to carry. It was just a thing. I needed to transport it from point A to point B. That was it. But the body was too heavy. In more ways than one. I kept dragging the body, but the burden was too much to bear. I was tired and hurt, and I just couldn't do it anymore. I looked at the body, and I, I wanted, really wanted to say something, but I choked on my words. I curled up into a ball with my arms around my head. I couldn't. I can't, I said. And then it was the only thing I could say, louder and louder, until it became a shriek. I can't. I can't. Lisa sighed and kneeled beside me. You're a werewolf, Gaia's soldier. There's nothing, nothing you can't do. Get up. We have a world to save. And you have a legacy to fulfill and a debt to pay. She was right. I took a deep breath. She was right. I was here for a reason and I had things to do. Um, okay, let's control our transformations. Suddenly, I knew what to do. I understood. It was as if I'd always known, always had this set of skills. I'd only chosen not to use them up to this point. 
I felt like I was about to stretch after a long day of sitting down and learning anatomy. It would be painful, but I wanted to do this. And if I got just a little stronger, I'd easily handle the body. I changed. Oh, we get to choose. Okay. Um... Glabro, near human. Krinos, that's the full battle form. And I don't really see how either of those would help us. So, Glabro seems like the obvious choice. That was Glabro, the near human form. The pain was stronger than I ever imagined. I felt my muscles spasm as they rearranged themselves. My jaw cracked and my mouth filled with blood. I clenched my fists and claws drove into my palms. I screamed. When I rose, panting and sweaty, I was more than human. I was glabro. Wolfish. Strong. Scary. It hurt. The change hurt more than I expected. The world shifted. Not much, but enough. I felt my teeth get sharper and muscles stronger. I picked up the body. It was a lot lighter. We went on. As we made our way through the forest, I realized we weren't alone. Somehow I knew what I'd see before I even saw it. A white weasel and a dark gray wolf. Ah, my companion smiled. I see you've noticed our patrons. Oh, patron spirits, right. Okay, I, I do remember those. I uh, remembered them from my dreams. Yeah, we know each other, I said, remembering my dream. We sort of met the other night. The two animals stopped in front of me in the middle of the path. We came here to teach the cub, said the wolf. She smelled of ash and tears. Interesting. Was I hallucinating? I couldn't believe what I saw. It, it made no sense. I felt as if my brain was short-circuiting, trying to interpret signals. Not meant for human senses. Was there really a talking wolf? Because that's clearly the strangest thing that's happened to us today. My eyes told me there was a wolf staring at me, but... When I looked at it, I felt ash on my tongue. I heard a morning howl so deep it reverberated in my bones, and I smelled fire. And when it talked, it was like the rustling of leaves formed words in my mind. They wouldn't leave me alone. But hallucinations or not, they, they just wouldn't leave me be. The weasel circled me, and before I knew it, I could feel small claws on my leg, then on my back, and then on my arm. It smelled of musk and electricity. And then it bit my ear. I ignored it. Do they always do that? I asked, ignoring the spirit. Speak to me when I'm biting you. The weasel's electronic voice echoed in my head. Enough, the wolf growled. Or at least that was what my brain decided to hear. I felt the weasel draw its breath. In the beginning there was Gaia, aka Mother Earth, and she gave birth to a mighty breed of warriors, the weasel began. It sounded electronical, like a teenager reading a Wikipedia page over a voice chat. They were called Garou, that's werewolves and werewolfish. Oh. Okay. And their sole purpose was to protect Gaia. They failed, wailed the wolf. I looked to the weasel for advice. Why did they fail? I asked. When time began, Gaia released three primal forces upon the earth. The weaver, the wild, and the worm, the weasel continued. The wild was the untamed force of life and creation. The cold, ruthless weaver gave structure to the world, and the weirm destroyed what needed to be destroyed, creating balance. 
Well, as servants of Gaia, I assume we... We were part of the wild? So, were werewolves creatures of the wild? I asked. An untamed force of life? They were Gaia's children, the wolf snarled. Born to herd and contain humans. Okay, so... What exactly went wrong? Because that clearly didn't happen. Yeah, I can see that something went wrong. I smiled wryly. The weaver grew too ambitious and trapped the weirm within its lifeless web, the weasel answered. Confined and denied, the weirm went slowly insane. The wolf wailed. Now Gaia is dying, choked by the weaver, and eaten alive by the worm, wailed the wolf. And the wild is not the one you should fight, she snarled. You were born to protect it. Then it turned and led the way. It took us to the barrows. It didn't look much different than other parts of the forest. Until you noticed the mounds, that is. There was something about the flattened hills that drew my full attention. I could... Remember. A memory stirred in my mind. No, it wasn't a memory. It was a feeling anchored in my chest, akin to the taste of ash in my mouth and the smell of smoke. Longing, sadness, resignation. But there was more. A sense of sacredness, it, it filled me with a calm excitement. And when I closed my eyes, I saw a fire burning in the darkness. Lisa kneeled near one of the mounds, put her hand on it, and whispered a few words. I saw the ground open slowly, like a mouth in the earth. I sighed. Let's do this. We put the body in the hole. We took the severed head and the body I'd wrapped up in sheets and put them in the hole. It closed slowly, and I could swear I heard the trees nearby sigh in anticipation. The wolf howled, and I could feel the hair on my hands rise. Welcome to your new life, the talking white weasel grinned. We have something else to show you. I had so many questions. Finally, I dared to ask them. I turned to... Lisa, we don't really know Daniel. He's the one who pees on things. I turned to Lisa and realized that she'd been watching me. If you want to ask something, just ask. How did she come to Poland? How did you get here? I asked. Well, my grandfather was from the old tribe, from up north, proper north, Siberian. Her voice was trembling. But we are spread around the world now, because the old Siberia is gone. Melted. Rotting. Well, I came here in search of a better life, through the forest. Illegal. I still wait for my papers to be sorted. She wasn't exactly hiding. Aren't you afraid they'll catch you? You're not... I searched for words. You're, you're not exactly hiding, I said finally. Nah, Lisa shrugged. You know, I do things here and there, help with the tourists, help with the forest, and my moonshine is the best in this province. Besides, I made a pact with spirits. They watch over me, distract people when they get too nosy. Enough talking, the white weasel grinned. We have much to do. So we ran. Vision Quest you're a cub, so you have special privileges, said the weasel. Pusha will grant you a vision. You must see to understand, said the wolf. Think carefully before you choose what to see. Oh. Um. Shoot, I kind of like the weasel. And I imagine that's the future, but... 
Our goal is to find out about our family. So while I am somewhat less interested in learning about the past, that is our entire goal here. I feel like we should pursue that. So, the Barrows, the past. Our complicated family. The Tangled Paths. It was hard to find the Barrows, although I knew where they were. When I looked behind me, the path had disappeared. I felt the Pusha playing with me, twisting paths, blocking my way with bushes and dead trees. And then suddenly, opening a new path that was straight and full of sunshine. I pushed on. I was determined. Since the change, I had become acutely aware of how my body worked, and I remembered what humans were good at. Running. Are they? Stubborn, relentless, long-distance running. Not as fast as deer. Not as nimble as a wolf, but steady and without rest. So I ran. Then, I was there. The Barrows. I climbed the nearest hill. When I was at the top, I stumbled on something. A shape in the grass. A skull watched me from its bleached eye sockets. I touched it. The Buried Past. There is a swirl. It starts deep within me, and then it expands. Everything is in motion, and there is no center anymore. I see a village. There is a village in the forest, and there is the howl of a wolf. People stop and look around, frightened. The howl is like a keen. The houses are mere huts. There is almost nothing that protects the people from the forest. Their clothes are rags. Their feet are bare. Their hair and long beards are unkempt. There are wolf cubs. Then there is blood. Then the howling begins, the mournful, blood-curdling keen of a mother who has lost her children. Watch, whispers the voice in my head. Watch and remember. But I want to act. I cannot just stand by and watch. I want to do something. I weigh everything for and against the humans, and I find them guilty. The forest listens to me. The forest wakes up, erupts with rage, and powerful furred bodies surge through the trees toward the village. The humans try to escape. They scream and beg for mercy. They try to protect themselves with fire. I take the fire from their hands. The Guru rise up, their talons red with blood, their eyes glazed with fury, and the fire is yanked from the hands of the villagers. I burn their houses. The village is ablaze. I make the wolf mother happy. The keening turns into a howl of joy. I am there from the very beginning. Yeah, this isn't great. The Guru have my eyes, my face. They are my family. I am the blood of their blood. I am part of the story from the very beginning. And I do it again. It happens again. The humans return. They rebuild the village. This time stronger and better protected. The keening begins once more. Then we, the Garu, come down on them like wolves on the fold. And again. New villages, new fires, more blood. No, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to keep doing this, but the keening begins anew. My heart fills with grief and rage, and villages burn. Until one day there is only one Garu left in the family, and he slays his own kindred in the fit of his first rage. I know him. 
my grandfather. He is young, but I recognize someone in him. An old man I knew. He used to tell me stories about the forest before my mother took me away. I can't move. I stay there and I watch, but I, I can't move. My throat burns, my stomach is in knots. I want to scream, but I have no mouth. I feel the fire, I smell the blood. I smell ash and tears. I see the large ash gray wolf looking straight at me. Her eyes are golden. She weeps. It is in your blood, she says to me. It is your duty. It is you. Come with me, child. Be my fangs and claws. There is no one else to be my cub. Come to me, child. I will nurse you and I will lick your wounds. We will kill together. We will feast. And we will be merry. The forest will grow. I looked at her. Perhaps for the first time I saw her for who she was. Her pelt was marred with fire. Her eyes were smoking embers. Ash was falling from her heaving flanks. She looked old, ancient, sad, and alone. She was the wolf from my vision. She was there, watching my grandfather from the darkness, waiting for the villages to burn. But she was more than that. She was also the Pusha. She was the spirit of the forest. The Pusha herself, wounded, hurt, violated, and mourning all her children that humans had killed. At least that was what I thought when I looked at her. The wolf mother looked back at me, and something in her eyes made me realize that she was helping my family for generations, and that my family used to serve her. Join me, she pleaded. Only you can understand me. Only you. Oh boy. So that was what the forest warriors were. They were particularly aggressive guru serving the Pushcha, or this embodiment of the Pushcha, which aggressively pushed back against the incursion of humans over multiple generations. I mean, I am sympathetic, but at the same time, I feel like the way we've been playing Maya, she would not, she would not just embrace the idea of returning to that sort of butchery. I mean, she's, she's really messed up just from killing Bartek. I don't think, um, I don't think she would eagerly rush into fulfilling some sort of weird family debt to continue murdering people. And yeah, that is basically how this is being pitched to us, so I mean... I think we will uh, politely decline. Thank you. Oh, boy. I took a step back, then another and another. I turned and I ran. I hoped the village was still there. Darkness. One of us. A lone howl pierced the silence like a single ray of moonlight in the darkness. Then there was another one. And then another, and another. A choir of voices, triumphant and joyful. I opened my eyes. When I opened them, I was in a clearing. Around me there were wolves. Huge, monstrous wolves, howling at the moon. Werewolves. Just like me. It hit me like a ton of bricks. I was a werewolf. This was my life now. Well, hello there, Cornell smiled at me. And welcome to the Sept. I'm sorry, the what now? The Sept. Whatever that meant. Okay, just so you know, I said slowly. I have no idea what a Sept is. For a werewolf, the pack is family, Cornell explained. And an alliance of packs united in a common goal is a sept. So, there were two packs there. That actually does explain a lot. I realized it must mean there were multiple packs. 
Yeah, 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 that's why they're fighting so much. Olga and Cornell are clearly two separate pack leaders. That's why, despite their disagreements, they never tried to exert authority over the other. Three of the monstrous wolves changed. Olga and Lisa stood up, human-looking again. Their clothes rumpled. A yellow-dyed wolf by their side turned out to be Daniel. We are the pack of the morning wolf mother, said Olga. They smelled of ash and tears. And for a moment I saw the wolf spirit among them. I looked at Cornell. A great gray-eyed wolf changed into Cornell. And soon Pat and Kim joined him. We are the Winter Weasel Pack, said Kim. A white shadow settled on Pat's shoulder. I smelled musk and electricity. We are all Gaia's soldiers, said Cornell. In that we have no choice. But we can choose whom we fight alongside. Who was winning this war? If there's a war, I asked, who's winning? At the moment, the worm, Cornell said. The word reeked of decay and burning oil. Mother Earth is sick, dying, and we are doing our best to protect her. I had so many questions. I have so many questions, I repeated out loud, shaking my head. Are sets normally this diverse? You're from all over Europe, I noticed. Is this like a, a standard for a sept? I looked at Cornell. I didn't even know if that was a stupid question or a smart one. It's far from the standard, but desperate times make strange bedfellows, he smiled sadly. Normally a sept is dominated by one tribe, maybe two. There are at least a dozen tribes, Daniel interrupted. And I hope, Maya, that you will choose yours wisely. Duly noted, guy who pees on things. Thanks. Why did I hear the moon whispering to me? I asked. Luna gave us rage. That is why she's important, Olga said. And that is why you'll never be able to touch silver again. Sure, that tracks. And uh, how do these spirits work? Exactly. What about the spirits? I asked. How does that work? The world casts a shadow, and we call it the Umbra, said Lisa. And in the shadow, every living creature, every emotion and idea, every important object exists as a spirit. That's all you need to know at the moment. And I have to join a pack? I have to choose? I asked, just to make sure. No guru can survive on their own, Lisa stressed. Among humans, I am an outcast, an immigrant, a lesbian, a heathen. The pack accepts me the way I am. I summed it up. Okay, so if I got this all right, I've been conscripted into an ancient war against the worm, I said slowly, trying to put it all together. And the moon gave me rage as a weapon, but I must avoid silver. I took a breath. And there's a whole secret world of spirits, I continued. And I have to join a pack and choose a tribe. I love that she is echoing my exact reaction. <laughs> exactly, Lisa nodded. As for the tribe, there are two people who could mentor you now. Olga is from the Black Furies, an ancient tribe of women warriors. And Cornell is from the Children of Gaia. And he's more a, a peace and harmony guy. What about my family's tribe? You know, the forest warriors who murdered all those people? The Shadow of Fenris. Oh, no. No, I know them. Hey, what about my family's tribe? I asked. Lisa winced. Daniel sighed. Olga shook her head. What's the matter? I asked out loud. You're 
Ancestors were the get of Fenris, and uh, no one here wants to have anything to do with that, tribe. Cornell answered. They stand against everything we believe in. Wait, so I... Uh, I came from a tainted bloodline? Story of my life. Does that mean I'm, I'm tainted? I asked. Tribe is not always a birthright. Sometimes it's a choice, Cornell said. So choose wisely. So yeah, we could go with Geta Fenris if we wanted to alienate every other person here. Except for the wolf spirit. She'd probably like that. Geta Fenris are the most radical guru supremacists that ever marred the face of Earth, Kim scoffed. Like legit fascist werewolves. Some of them literally worked for Hitler. Yeah, that is uh, less than ideal. Also, I remember Kim now. Uh, I briefly forgot who she was. She was the uh, bar fighter. Lisa's girlfriend, which is interesting because they're from two different packs, I think. Thank you for telling me, I said carefully. I had the right to learn about where I came from. For a moment, we were all silent. Well, this is awkward. I needed to know more about the tribes. I wanted to learn more about the tribes and find an option that would really resonate with who I was. Oh, and here we pay the price for our various relations. The people we have a positive relationship with are open to discussing it, but we can't approach the more cautious members without spending well. I asked Daniel if I could join his tribe, but he didn't understand the question. I'm a Red Talon, he said, as if it explained everything. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember those guys. That does actually explain a lot. His social awkwardness and uh, tendency to pee on things makes a lot more sense now. What are the Red Talons? I asked Daniel. It is the tribe of the Guru who were born as wolves, Daniel explained. We usually don't mix with others, and we kill humans. But since I'm the only one here, I, I decided it was better to join the rest. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Also, not big on the murder thing, but okay. It is better to have a pack than to be alone, I said. He nodded. There's always strength in numbers. I protect my folk better when there are more werewolves around. Your folk? Wolves. I stared to get to know who he was. Daniel sniffed the air. His nostrils moved in a very non-human way. I was looking, enthralled. Was he a wolf? Are you a wolf? I asked. He made a face. We all are. I could kind of get what he was trying to say. You're right, I agreed. We run and hunt together, but my experiences were different than yours. He tilted his head and looked at me. Yes, I was born as a wolf. And then when it turned out I was not only a wolf, I was disgusted. You know, going around on two legs, soft and helpless. You, who really wants that? I didn't want to have anything to do with humans. But Lisa comes one day, and, and she talks to me and, and brings me to Olga. And I think, well, they're not that bad. Then they have stuff. Stuff is nice. I like stuff. He sniffed on the wind again. Besides, he said, I can show them the Pushcha the way I see it, the way the wolf sees it. Once they see it like that, they, they never come back to their old ways. That was all I needed to hear from him. He's, uh, he's an interesting character, but not the tribe for us, I think. Thanks, I said. I talked with Lisa next. I asked Lisa about her tribe, but she inherited her Siberak, Siberak legacy from her Buryat grandfather. She said I didn't know the proper legends, customs, and culture to join. Was Siberak a Russian word? So, I asked, not sure how to approach the topic. Siberak? I mean, you're from Siberia. 
I hesitated and Lisa smirked. But the tribe name reminds me of something. Yes, Sibirak. She pronounced it differently, so it sounded like a Polish word. I am so lost right now. Uh, I must I must have heard it before. I'm sure that I heard it before, I said. In a different context. In Russian, it means someone from Siberia. But in Polish, it has its own very specific meaning, Lisa explained. It's a word for political prisoners exiled to Siberia. And there were tens of thousands of them. Oh, that okay. Well, which uh, which meaning did she prefer? I asked her, the Russian or the Polish. Lisa smiled. My tribe name describes both of my legacies. My granny was a political exile, and my grandpa was a Siberian indigenous. I use it because it speaks the truth. Cool. Thanks. Really wishing I'd paid more attention in social studies when I was a wee raider, like eight billion years ago. Okay, so obviously we can't join that tribe and we're not joining the Red Talons. So let's, um... Let's chat with... Crap, we can only really afford one of these. Let's chat with Pat. We barely know her. We met her very briefly a couple of times. But I think that's Glasswalker. I got a very Glasswalker vibe, since it always mentioned she was carrying around electronic devices and setting up their websites and stuff. Pat was indeed a Glasswalker. Very nice. And her tribe was finding its niche in cutting-edge technological cityscapes among the strands of the Weaver's Net. It sounded intriguing. We talked for a while. No, oh, my precious willpower. So you're basically a city dweller, I observed. All glasswalkers are. It's our natural habitat. I feel quite out of place in the forest. Yeah, that, uh, that gets my interest. I like forests. I don't want to live there. Is it a tribe thing? I asked, interested. That's what it is, she nodded. We use the weaver to fight the worm, and the forest is not the weaver's domain. And I happen to be quite fond of humanity. They have great potential. Oh man, I want to know more, but I don't want to run out of will. Uh... How would we even have more will right now? Because we lost everything during the fight sequence. And have had scant chances to recover. I mean, I guess the obvious answer is we really should have leaned more heavily into Cornell's thing. And, uh, and focused more on the future than the past. Then this wouldn't cost us anything. I wouldn't take you for a werewolf, you know, I said to Pat. She snorted. Why? She looked... harmless. Because you look... mostly harmless, I ventured. She shrugged. I am, and I didn't expect to turn out a werewolf either. I was a student, happy with my tablet and coding, and then... boom. Instant werewolf. <laughs> yeah, join the club. Or actually, I guess I'm joining the club. So how'd you, uh, how did you meet Cornell? I was curious. I was in his first pack. We were both hanging out with the hacktivist crowd back then. Oh my goodness, that term. Uh, when things went south and he disappeared, I found him. How? I asked. Pat rolled her eyes. Girl, please. I'm a tech nerd. So I found him, and I talked him into coming back. Well, that is very interesting, and I will have to think it over. With my zero willpower. 
I was tired of talking. I was exhausted. This was a lot to take in and my brain was about to explode. I was done bugging them with personal questions. Time to make a rash and uninformed decision. One thing is bugging me, I said. Why are there so many of you here? Suddenly everyone in Yawovieza is a werewolf or what? You know nothing, Cub. Olga laughed bitterly. A mere century ago, there were dozens of packs in these forests. But none of the old guard survived the 90s. Lisa shook her head. We had to start from scratch. Until you showed up, there were only six of us, and the three of us not even local, Cornell pointed out. Two packs, too small for their own good. Wait, so where, where does Erica come in, the uh, reporter? Anyway, before you're admitted to a tribe, you need to prove yourself. Prove myself? I was shocked. Hadn't I proven myself enough already? Rite of Passage You went through your first change, Pat said. She was leaning on a tree nearby. And you know everything you need to know at the moment. But you have to go through the Rite of Passage. Daniel rubbed against my leg, excited. Personal space, please. A vision quest, Kim winked at me. And since we don't have time for tests, we need you to solve the real problem. Olga stepped in. Namely, we want to find a way of ending this slogging problem, Cornell said gently. So, how would you like to do it? They all looked at me in anticipation. I took my time, overwhelmed by everything that happened. My old self was gone, replaced by a, a shape-shifting eco-warrior. But deep down, I was still the same person, with the same ideas and ideals. Hey, willpower. One whole point. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Um, yes. We are analytical. We need to understand the enemy. We need to understand why the loggers are doing this, I decided, and make them change their mind. Kim looked unconvinced. Never mind the loggers. Kim made a dismissive gesture with her hand. We have to inspire the protesters. Lisa rolled her eyes. You are all blind and ignore our most powerful ally. Lisa rolled her eyes. There are many ancient spirits in the Pusha, and we should talk to them. I continued with my plan. As much fun as it would be to wrangle up a bunch of murder spirits. There must be someone responsible for the shit in Yawaveza here at the local level, I continued. I want to have a talk with them. Cornell bared his teeth in a predatory smile. I know exactly who you should talk to. Daniel beamed. Spoken like a true Philodex. You were born under a half moon, weren't you, Maya? Oh, yeah, 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 that, that certainly seems to track. Interesting. I looked at him in surprise. How did he know? Mom always told me that when she gave birth to me, the half moon was shining through the window, reminding her that this too shall pass. I nodded. And look at that. All of our traits have vanished turning into our auspice, Philodex, the judge. You're right, I nodded. How did you know? Garu born under the half-moon are judges and truth-seekers, said Cornell. Just like you and me. The worthy Philodex is honor personified, added Lisa. 
Your place in the Werewolf Society will be determined by your renown. You can earn glory through defeating mighty enemies and succeeding at dangerous quests. You can earn honor by following your moral imperative and upholding the laws of the Garu. You can earn wisdom by acting efficiently and thinking well before you act. Your renown will change as you play, contributing to Maya's legend among the Garu. No pressure. I felt completely overwhelmed. Olga must have sensed my confusion. Come on, we have a lot to discuss. She patted my shoulder. And we have to find your phone and wallet. So, I followed her. I nodded. I had to tie up loose ends in my old life. Back to the beginning. I am sitting on a bus. The sun streaming through the windows is making it hard to see. The narrow road cuts through a dense, old forest. My mind wanders. What? Wait. I remember doing something important, walking among the trees, looking for something. Losing something I loved, gaining something unwanted. But then I'm fully awake and the memories scatter away. We're almost there, says Anya. I did some searching. She looks at me from over her phone. And this place is amazing. The last primordial forest in Europe. What? What is happening? Um... It can't be the last one. Oh my god. Uh... Hate that. Um, wait, it can't be the last one, can it? it? It's... I'm not able to finish. I start to cough. I spit up blood. My throat is sore. My lungs hurt. Anya. I need help. Uh, Anya. I turn to her. Should we help her? She asks, looking at something she is clutching to her chest. It is Vartek's severed head. Let her die. It answers in a raspy voice. She had it coming. I feel something ashen and dry in my mouth. And then it starts to move. Spiders! What is happening? I don't... I spit it out and see thousands of small spiders leaving my mouth. Threads of silk cover me, the seat, and everything around us. I... Fight? I try to fight them, but they're too small and there are too many of them. And after a few seconds, I am covered in cobwebs, unable to move. There's a hiss. Please stop looking at me like that. I hear a hiss. Then, slowly, a long, dark, thin shape comes out of Bartek's mouth. A black snake that reeks of rotten meat, acid, and oil. Don't fight, Maya. You're already mine, it says. Just like your grandpa. And then it kisses me. Chapter 5, The Plan Um... So... That happened. I... Um... You know what? I, I feel like this is a good place to call it. We're already running a bit long and my brain has indeed exploded. Um... But hey, we're, we're a glass walker. That's cool. That's like the one tribe I was actually semi-familiar with way back when. And it is kind of funny because, you know, as I'm playing this, like, 50% of it is coming back to me. You know, stuff I haven't thought about in in at least 10 or 15 years since I actually played World of Darkness at the, uh, at the gaming table. 
Anyway, we will uh, hit the pause button for now. I'm going to go unpack this again. And uh, we will pick up here next time as we continue being completely bewildered and overwhelmed by everything. I will uh, see you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Werewolf the Apocalypse, Heart of the Forest, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official social media feeds, or the official store pages. And if you'd like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things, or maybe even check out the Patreon. Links are in the description.